All right. So I'm going to do this backwards. I'm going to ask the dumb, well, maybe not. I'm going to ask the dumb questions first, in part because I think that the crypto space gets so into its own language that for readers, it's like, I, I want to just lay some, some simple groundwork and then we'll get into some of the, the, the specifics. Sure. When you imagine the world five years from now, 10 years from now, how does discovery and payment of content work and where does Lino sit in that uh, in that in that ecosystem? Um, so that's like five years or ten years from now, right? Uh, As far enough ahead that it that the world has changed and you won. Yeah. Uh, so in the long run, um, I believe content distribution and um, content payment uh, should not go through any third party oracle. Um, so we, we do not need to trust any like third party like YouTube as a monopoly platform and um, um, the same as content delivery. Uh, people should have the choice to watch whatever they want without going through a central authority saying like you should watch these or you should, should not watch that. Um, um, that's my vision and in order to do that, um, blockchain is the fundamental technology that enable us to, to, to do so. So, so the, the thing that YouTube, so, so YouTube absolutely does control monetization for creators, but it also, at least in theory, is a discovery engine. So is there, is there, and by the way, my, my, my apologies, is it Lino or Lino? It's Lino. Uh, Lino. All right. Is there, so how, how does Lino help? So I'm a filmmaker. And I've mm -hmm. made a film that I want people to see, and it's about something relatively unique. It's not mass. It's not a mass film. It's a niche film. Like how, if if YouTube goes away, mm -hmm. and and you know, and Netflix goes away, and Amazon, you know, video goes away. How does Lino fill the discovery piece, or is that somebody else? You're, or are you the payment mechanism, and someone else is going to find solve discovery? Uh, so Lino is the, um, the the infrastructure for apps um, to build up on. Um, so on top of Lino, there could be another YouTube or could be another like uh, Netflix or, or or Twitch. And uh, uh, regarding on like content discovery, um, it is actually not much about um, the platform. It is about the algorithm. How how do you deal with the algorithm? What kind of user data input are you using um, in order? To, to have a better, uh, more um, like individualized, customized um, um, like uh, video push. And uh, so I, I think YouTube has been um, doing really well on their uh, recommending algorithm. Um, but I, I don't see that as something that you need a centralized authority to do so. So it would not be a barrier for Lino or any apps on top of Lino to do the same or even better because all data here are transparent and the censorship would not be the same as YouTube. So um, as a filmmaker, um, I mean, you should be fine, um, have enough exposure and um, based on the algorithm that we have, um, I think you, you should be able to reach out your audiences. So with, now let's do a little bit of background. So you're, the the note that I got said that you were a serial entrepreneur. Tell me about some of your other companies. Oh, okay. So um, I have done uh, many different projects. Um, uh, I, I was a product manager before and I, I also invest um, in a, a couple of like um, internet related company and also ICOs. And um, the, the project that I have done um, when I was in college was about e-commerce and uh, we help people. The first project um, I've done related to internet is a secondary market. Um, no, like, like a, a, sec, a, a used stuff market uh, for books. So you can trade books um, within the campus. Um, after you finish 
a, a quarter or a semester you, you have done with your textbook and then you can trade it with uh, your friend. And that's the first project. And, um, and um, I have done some real estate stuff and um, so many other projects. I don't know which one you are interested in. Well, I, I guess I'm trying to figure out. So in the, in the spirit of full disclosure, I should tell you that I've spent a big chunk of my career believing that video, th that the current ecosystem for video was inexorably broken and something new would come along that would that would be more fair to creators, would create a stream of revenue so that films could get made or stories could be told that weren't just about media. And so when I read about what you were doing, my immediate reaction was, you know, what made you pick YouTube? What was like, you know, everyone knows that there's all kinds of things going on in crypto around finance, but what, like, what was the thing that made you pick this narrow focus? Um, so last year, um, I was using, um, some other crypto platforms, like, um, like they, they were doing some kind of Reddit and, um, uh, uh, that's called steam. Their website is called steamit.com. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I was, um, their early adopters and, um, um, I, I, I got so interested in their idea about how how to decentralize the content delivery stuff. Uh, but the problem of their system is they, they, they first of all, they, they focus on uh, blogging, not video blogging. And uh, I, I think the whole decentralized digital content um, economy, the, the key is you have to uh, focus on the content that has value. And um, obviously videos um, creates more value than like, test content and um that's why uh, initially I, I i think video would do better and also like the live streaming stuff um it is highly related to um money transactions so people has the habit to um do like micro tipping or gifting um during the broadcast and so that's also video related so above all, um, I, I started to dig into the video industry and um, I'm a heavy, heavy like YouTube um, user. So um, this is the, the, the origin of like what I, I, I start, why I started this idea. So when you say you're a heavy YouTube user, tell me what that means. What kind of things do you watch? Like music videos, short films and um, like basketball games, a lot of stuff. Do you subscribe to channels? Um, yeah. Um, especially some some like uh, some pop stars that I like, Ethan Chen, for example. Um. So so this so that's that's a great answer. So what you're saying is, you know, you have this skill. You're thinking about blockchain. You're sitting in front of the computer. You're watching YouTube, and you're like, wait. This could be better. I could be paying money directly to the creators without it going through Mountain View, and they would get a fairer shake. I mean, like, it was it. I mean, was there, was it more like I need to find a place to do a, a blockchain company video is a good one, or was it like no, we can make this better? Like, what was the thing that drove you to build it? I think um, um, I am more like a, a a problem solver. I I I am really curious I, like, I mean personally I, I love to um, look at the problems that um, what the, 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 the current products that we have um, and um, I, I, I like like last year I, I, I'll tell you my situation um, I wasn't in a hurry into like doing anything like crypto blockchain projects like I uh, in, immediately, I, I was not in a rush. Um, I was already making a lot of money doing like investments already. And um, so I'm basically uh, financially free. And um, my biggest initiative is to solve the problem and create some bigger value that is more than making money. And that's uh, frankly my initiative. And it, it just happened to be 
um, this one since I, I, me and my co-founders, we were talking about Stimit and um, we have been using that for more than half year. And um, and um, as a product manager, I have the instinct, um, like this stuff, the model that they created uh, is valuable. And then we dig deeper into it and find out a lot of problems that have they have not solved. Not only the market uh, fitting problem, but also their fundamental economic uh, system and their incentive system. Those are lots of, uh, they, they have a lot of, um, uh, how, how, how should I phrase this? Uh, their system is, it, it is a little bit too uh, utopian and uh, we want to make it more realistic. And that's, that's uh, why we have been working, what we have been working on uh, for the last eight months. Talk, talk more about that. Why, why, do you, why do you describe their system as utopian? Um, so, um, are, are you a, a Stimit user? I'm sorry, which? A Stimit user. Stimit? The, yeah, Stimit. No. Okay. Uh, so what they have is, uh, so for, for content creator, um, how do they earn money? The, the whole system they created did not have any kind of consumption model. So when you're trying to tip someone, um, you just click a like, and that like is proof of stake. Um, so based on how much money you own, you can allocate uh, from the reward pool that they create from um, the, the currency inflation. Um, and um, just by simply one click, no one lose money and everybody makes money. And that's not sustainable. And um, the pricing system based on, pro uh, based on voting um, is not correct so they basically do not have a market um, for content which I, I define market as value of exchange and um, they have a huge problem of uh, allocating rewards to content um, not based on the market need but based on voting power so that's their fantasy and it will not last it's not sustainable in the long run right now if they're doing fine they're growing really really fast but that's because the secondary market is crazy and uh, a lot of cryptocurrency buyers are paying the bill. But the, the people, the consumer or uh, the advertiser, first of all, they don't have advertiser. And uh, the, the people who need to pay the content are not paying and do not have any plan to pay in the future. So this is not working. Um, you mentioned earlier um, Twitch. Um, yes. I mean, couldn't Twitch adopt a blockchain payment mechanism and, you know, or, or, or is that, why, why would that not be your competitor? Um, I'm not saying like 100% impossible, uh, but like uh, this is a very common question. Why don't YouTube or why don't Facebook even, uh, why, why don't Twitch, they do the blockchain stuff and become decentralized suddenly? Um, I think that the main issue here is they have a very fundamental conflict of interest um, against their board member, uh, against their shareholders. So right now, as shareholder of, um, of, of YouTube or, 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 or Twitter or Twitch, um, you are expecting um, to share profits from them. And um, you, you, you control, you, you control a part of the company. And um, the whole blockchain stuff, the whole decentralized autonomous organization concept um, has a huge conflict against the private company, private entity, um, and their interests. So if they want to transform from a private entity to a nonprofit DAO, um, they will have to deal with their major shareholders. And it, it is super difficult since you have to sacrifice billions of profits that you're currently making. So, so what you're saying is in the current ecosystem, someone who makes something for YouTube or Twitch or wherever they are, are they're essentially employees. They're paid whatever yeah. the whatever the company chooses to share with them, but they don't have they, they don't have the control of their economic destiny. Yes. And and the reason why is that is uh, uh, it is a 
a very monopolized market. Um, if let's say if, if the the content market, uh, and by the way, that's be, uh, why the 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 uh, why we have the antitrust law and why we uh, the the capitalism works so well um, in the current stage, but uh, not so well in the in the internet space because everything in the internet tend to be monopolized. Um, so whenever you have a monopoly in the market, they basically set the price and also um, any profit distribution, um, they, they have to say. And um, as a content creator, you do not have any kind of bargaining power against them unless you are like Marvel or, or some kind of big label branding. Um, um, the long-term long equilibrium between YouTube and um, individual content creators, uh, for example, like you, um, it would be your producing costs, your production costs. Um, let's say you're, when you're trying to produce a film, your cost of um, that production is $10. And, um, and the long-term equilibrium uh, between you and YouTube would be they will pay you barely above $10. And whatever rest, let's say your film sell like uh, $100, um, ticket and um, all $90 goes to YouTube. That's the long-term equilibrium. They keep you survive, but you do not make more profit than your labor costs. And that's based on the, uh, the Marxism stuff. And the problem that they point out is exactly correct, um, but the, just the solution that they try to uh, figure is not right. And uh, the blockchain give us another option and we're trying to solve that. So, so I want to go back to the question we started with because now I understand better. So ten, five years from now, 10 years from now, sometime when the world changes, I'm going to come home at the end of a day or I'm going to have my mobile phone in my hand and I'm going to say, I really want to watch um, this particular artist or presenter and, and will I, like, will they set the price or will I, or is it, do you see it as a tipping system or is it a, uh, or, or does it depend on the different, you know, different creators can use different models? Um, so for us, we, we are a very uh, fundamental protocol level. Uh, we provide infrastructure for all kinds of monetization models. And um, so um, whether you want to use tipping or uh, you want to use a subscription model or like a prepay or advertising, it all depends on the app developer and the content creators. So um, if a, let's say, um, if a YouTuber um, or, or a YouTube developer, uh, they, they try to adopt the same model as YouTube, you can have that. And if they try to introduce a super micro tipping or gifting model, you can have that. So it all depends. It will be a competitive market and whatever runs out, win. So I, I get the egalitarian winner vision, but like, do you see this as simply being the, the bottom of the market, the edgy part of the market, or does this also, you know, does Netflix find itself in the crosshairs of Lino? Um, Netflix is quite different. Uh, they're more like a, a, a uh, professional generated content model and uh, their major barrier or court competency is their IP owned it, their copyright and um, for us uh, at least in, in two or three years we're majorly focused on user generated content because those are the people who needed our help um, and not not the not the big labels. They they have the bargaining power against the platform. They can make money their way. And um, and and that's um, yeah. So initially, I I try to focus more on the UGC side and help the uh, middle or small guys. Um, so this is great. Uh, it gives me a lot to work with. Thank you. It's very interesting, and I'm 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 officially a fan and a supporter. So. Uh, uh, I, I love what you're trying to do and I think it's overdue and I hope I hope you're successful. Thank you so much. And um, so if you're interested into um, the more details of our technical parts, 
uh, I can certainly send you some um, confidential documents, uh, white paper or uh, technical papers. Um, just if you're interested, let me know. Okay, sure. Um, can I say that again? Mm, no, no, sorry. <laughs> Not quite your room, but it, there's going to be a lot of, of a lot of my geek friends are all going to Texas this weekend, so. Oh, okay. Um, like, yeah, we're not going. Maybe next time. We're super busy developing stuff, so. Um, I guess maybe that's the last question, just to wrap things up. What's the timeline? When when do creators get to start using Lino? Um, so, we have the test that um, last month. And the main net, um, the estimation would be this June, probably, and uh, uh, maybe a little bit earlier uh, in May or June. And um, that's when we are going to launch uh, multiple D apps on top of Lino, you know, the main net. Um, yeah, that's the timeline. That's terrific. That's very exciting. Excellent. Well, it was nice talking to you, and I'm sure we'll talk again. Yeah, thank you so much. Right. Thank you for your time, Steve. Absolutely. Bye bye.